Praise God, praise God. This is Apostle Dixon. Praise God. Today is the 25th day of the 40 day fast. I pray that you are staying focused. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I pray that things are being broken off of your life, in your life, through your life. And I pray that you understand my title, The Great Commission. You know, if you have been listening to me lately, you can see a shift. There's been a shift because God is shift. God is a dimensional God. God is not a traditional God. Now, hold on. His way are still the same. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And he is still holy. I know a lot of people think he got swag and, and they think he cool and, you know, yeah, no, he's holy. Praise God. Praise God. So this morning, or may I say this afternoon, I wanted to speak up on some things. First of all, I still will be getting on here to talk to you about the three questions. Was the disciples under a church? All right. I think the second one, um, what was the second one? Hold on, I have it written down. Hold on a minute. Yes, okay. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So I praise God for you guys. I pray that everything is going great. And if it's not, you better you better make it. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Let's see. I have it written down. I have so much stuff written down. So I had three questions yesterday that I had left you guys with. And um, I do apologize. I couldn't get back on, but I will say this. I am. I, I promise you I'll always get back on and do what I said and say what I do. Might not be in the time frame that everybody think it should be in. Okay, now where is my notes? All right. Well, nevertheless, I do have it. Hold on here. Well, praise God, praise God. Let me stick to my title, and while I'm looking for this, I, I'll just say it at the beginning, in or middle, whatever. But it, here's the case. Um, basically, what God was saying is that He said, "Diana, they have forgotten the Great Commission." And I said, "God, what do you mean?" He said, "Most people are on their own mission. If you notice today's church, and, and let's just be honest." Most people are speaking. I'm talking about they have wonderful messages. I mean, the messages that make you shake a little. Um, you know, you won't be catching the Holy Ghost, not no true Holy Ghost. But it, it'll make you shout. It'll make you say, go preach it, preach, preach, or whatever the case may be. But um, I will tell you this. You still got to do the Great Commission. So we're going to go straight into this, okay? Matthew 28, 16, 20, King James Version. Always read the King James Version because the most of them are worded down in case you just want to have a breakdown. All right, so we're going to start at verse 16. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when, 17, and when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Mm, and they was with Jesus. 18, and Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. 19. Go ye therefore. I want you to focus on verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even into the end of the world. Amen. 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 Let me tell you something. I think the church have forgotten that. First of all, I don't hear about baptism anymore. Do you? And let's be honest. Do people really give altar calls anymore? Um, are people more kind of like I guess they endowed with how many um, people, let, let's just be honest, which everything's about numbers, numbers and members. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But God was saying, he said, Diana, they got to go back to the Great Commission. It is about salvation. Too many people are dying with not the knowledge of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one that can save, the one that can heal, the one that can de deliver, the, the one that you surrender your heart to. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And so what's happening is now we got a church on church. Now we have a people flowing in the flesh and not the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. More people flow in the flesh and they have mastered it. They have mastered how to really just, it's, I said the other day, the art of deception and the art of seduction. I'm going to say that again, the art of deception and the art of um, seduction. And how do you know that? Deception is, 
it'll feel like God, it'll look like God, and, and but your spirit says something about it is off. So all I'm saying is that we have to go back to the oracles of Christ. It's all about salvation, not denomination. Come on, somebody. How do you? It does not matter. I need you all to know those that just like to worship with your own kind. You know, white people like to worship with white people, black with black, Indian. Y'all get the drift. I want y'all to know something. Newsflash. There will not be any sections in heaven. That will not be any, um, you know, ethnicities, um, you know, like black people over here, white people over here, Indian is over here, Ethiopians over here. Y'all, y'all get the drift, right? Okay. So, and I, I think God does that for a reason because God is, I don't think God made color just for, it, it, it was about the Tower of Babel. That's when everything got um, separated. But that doesn't mean that we're not together as an entity, a unity. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And that's what the enemy that came in. The enemy that came into the body of Christ and have everybody divided, everybody by Methodist, um, Pentecostal, um, ba- Baptist, um, Seventh-day Adventist. It does not matter. We're really supposed to serve one Lord, we have one faith, and one baptism. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Excuse me, but they're not teaching that. What they're teaching is what they want to teach. Men have always challenged God. Isn't that something? They get so intellectual until you start challenging God because you're a doctor. But you don't understand. He is the doctor. You got a doctor, but he is the doctor. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. We have to go back to worshiping the Lord thy God. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But I'm going to break that thing down even more so. When was the last time you saw altar call? When was the last time you saw baptism? When was the last time you saw authentic power of the Holy Ghost. Now, please don't play with me and don't lie to yourself. When was the last time? When was the last time that you heard a Holy Ghost filled message? When was the last time you somebody saw somebody filled with the Holy Ghost? When was the last time somebody laid hands in the Holy Ghost? When was the last time somebody was healed and delivered? I'm asking you a question because if you cannot answer any of these questions and yet you call yourself going to that church, oh, come on somebody, and they are not operating in the power of the Holy Ghost, then I think you are just going to a meeting. Oh, come on somebody hallelujah you don't hear what i'm saying anywhere where god is not then you shouldn't be yourself oh come on somebody hallelujah i'm tired of these fake preachers fake apostles fake prophets and, and if you fake you too you need to get saved you need to get healed and you need to get delivered because this is not a game it never was the only people are playing are the people that are strained come on somebody hallelujah and now they want to say well it don't take all that the devil is a lie from the beginning till now and also to the end it takes all all that plus some. Honey, it takes a lot to stay safe. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because you have an enemy, the Bible says, that likes to steal, kill, and destroy. And not necessarily in that order. He is coming in any shape, form, or fashion. And let me tell you something in case you didn't know. He's not coming to you to play. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And most of the time, let me ask you something. Most of the time, you're not going to let an enemy get close to you, right? So who do you think that he's going to operate mostly in? Oh, yeah, y'all got to hear me this morning. He will operate through anybody that is close to you. And so, therefore, you got to be strong anyway because you can't rebuke everybody because then you ain't going to have nobody. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. However, what you could do is walk in the power of the Holy Ghost and just say, you out of order. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. What you trying to do? You have to call sin the way it is. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because the sin is not also without it is within. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. The enemy works through those that are closest to you. There could be envy. There could be jealousy. There could be hate. And guess what? You will always see it. Now, some of y'all like to perpetrate it out like you don't see what you see. I thank God for my mother because she always told me, be real with myself. And I think you, oh, she left me with that. I, I just don't know how to play crazy. Oh, come on, somebody. I just don't know how to act like I don't see what I see. Meaning that if I see that you're not really for me, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to do like grandma do and guess what i gotta find one of them long-handed spoons because guess what we're gonna need them in this hour even more so y'all ain't ready for me i could not understand why grandma used to always say feed people with a long-handed spoon baby and i would say what's grandma talking about i don't think she's talking about a big spoon for real right but she was but the metaphor was you can't trust everybody that's close to you the metaphor was guess what some people close to you gonna deceive you the metaphor was you better watch those oh come on somebody they used to have a saying Keep your enemies, uh, keep your friends, cl- no, keep your enemies close, but your friends closer. And we think that all those were just cliches, but can I be real with you? Can you remember Judas? Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Jesus and Judas, but I want to walk with you one day, and, and I want you to walk with me today. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You're going to catch that in a minute. Let me tell you something. 
People don't understand why Jesus picked Judas. Oh, but I think I do. You see, God knew, Jesus knew that what was in his heart was going to destroy him. I'm going somewhere. Walk with me. Let me tell you something. Whatever is in your heart, whatever keeps you, whatever makes you run, whatever makes you tick, whatever your treasure is, it will do two things to you. It will promote you or demote you. It will make you live again or it will kill you. Y'all ain't ready for me this morning. Let me tell you something. What he liked to do? Well, he was the treasurer, right? He liked it, that money. That same thing had him killed. Y'all ain't ready for me. You better be careful of your gifts because it would either give you power or make you powerless. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And so Jesus saw that. And Jesus tried to give that fool a chance. Yeah, I call him a fool because anybody that close to the power of God and yet there was no change. As a matter of fact, that's why he did what he did because he really didn't respect Jesus. What he respected was his craft. What he respected was that money. And guess what? As long as Jesus brought in the crowds, then the money came. Y'all ain't ready for me. There would be some people around you that as long as the crowds come, as long as the money come, they you your friend. Y'all ain't ready for me, family too. Ah, oh, but Jesus saw him and you should see him too. Because guess what? They'll act like they'll love you. They'll walk with you. They'll roll with you. And But guess what? It's going to come a time. Y'all ain't ready for me. It's going to be a time where guess what? They're going to have to, they're going to have to show themselves. You don't hear what I'm saying. Oh, you ain't got to do nothing to nobody. Sooner or later, they're going to show who they are. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. Some of y'all be plotting and planning and praying for people downfall. All you got to do is called the gift of time. Let me tell you some time exposes everything and everybody. Oh, let me continue. So as time passed, what happened? He really, really betrayed. And, and hold on, even the, when they protect in the braid, he says, the one who dipped with me will betray me. So that was another way to tell him don't do. And everybody knew it was him because everybody looked. Well, wait a minute. We ain't dipped with him. It must be Judas. And Judas still did what he did. Because I'm going to tell you, what's in you is in you. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But don't worry because Jesus used that to his advantage. You see, you got to understand. Some of you don't understand Psalm 23. It says that I press you in the presence of of your enemy. Don't you understand that without enemies, you can't get that real hard blessing? Oh, come on. I'm not talking about them little bitty blessings. We blessed anyway. But I'm talking about those things that you prayed for. Those things that you saw in your spirit. Those things that God put in your spirit. Those the type of blessings that you need enemies around. Oh, come on somebody. Because they're going to make you pray like you ain't never prayed. They're going to make you focus like you ain't never focused. And God going to expose them sooner or later. Just wait for it. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. So Jesus needed Judas. Because guess what? He said, I see you. And that's why I picked you. You don't understand. Sometimes God will allow what you can't stand or who is trying to hurt you to be your stopping stone. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. That's why he say, oh, I'll make your enemies your footstools. Y'all ain't ready. Let me tell you something. Get ready to step. Y'all ain't ready. When you see your enemies, you should be able to step because you're getting ready to step into your blessing, honey. Oh, let me continue. So, so Jesus said, okay, guess what? Let him go ahead and kiss me. Kiss me, Judas. Every time you see Judas, you should say, go ahead and kiss me because I know what you're getting ready to do, but I'm getting ready to step into something. Don't you know that Jesus know he was going to the cross? He said, so I'm going to use that food for my motivation. I'm going to let him betray me. I'm going to let him take them 30 silvers. Come on, somebody. And then he's going to hang his own self. Oh, come on, somebody. You ain't got a plot and plan for nothing because guess what? Enemies will hang them on selves. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It'll be so smooth. It had to be a plan. So walk with me. So when he betrayed Jesus, then he came to himself. And you know why he came into himself? Because he knew what he had did was wrong. He, and hold on, that guilt killed him. Oh, come on, somebody. Nobody laid a hand on Judas. His own demons found him out. What am I saying? Y'all sitting up there worrying about people. You ain't got to worry about nothing because God have it all laid out for you. But you got to understand, you see, it was 11, right? And, and, and he had picked 12, but then he subtracted one. I'm going somewhere. The great commandment mission. Notice the verse that I just read. He said, and the 11 of them, y'all ain't ready. So you got to understand that that 12, which is what? The government. 12, the completion. Y'all ain't ready for me. I'm going somewhere today. The great commission. You just got to stay focused. You just got to stay focused because guess what? Jesus got something for you and you got to remember the great commission. You know, Jesus was moved with compassion and that is why he was able to preach and teach with power. Don't ever use, lose your compassion 
and know what the commission is. Because let me tell you something. There will always be one. Oh, I'm ready for you. There will always be one. There will always be one. And I'm going to tell you something. It is a reason why God allow that person or persons to come against you. Y'all ain't ready for me this morning. Or may I say this afternoon. So I'm telling you right now. Things are getting ready to happen. And I'm talking about numbers and members too. Because everybody's into numbers and members. But I'm telling you right now, God said he got something for you. Those that hold on. Those that be strong. Those that carry on. Those that press to. Those that, ah, y'all don't hear me. Sacrifice. Come on somebody, hallelujah. It's a sacrificial offering. Your life is a sacrificial offering. And I'm going somewhere. Hold on. Hold on a minute. Hold on. I'm going somewhere. Hallelujah. I feel God shifting me. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm typing. Hold on a minute. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Y'all should be praying. Whenever I stop like that, because I don't just stop in messages. Y'all should be praying. Those that pray. Those that don't pray, just listen. Don't, don't do nothing. We don't want you to do nothing. Yeah, I said it. Okay, praise God. Because God got me going somewhere really deep this morning. I mean, I say this afternoon. Okay, praise God. So the number 11 is a master number. Y'all understand that, huh? Which means that it resonates at an extremely high vibration. Number 11 is a transmission of personal power to your higher, more spiritual self. Master number 11. Now we're talking about what number 11 means in the Bible. So you remember I was saying that, okay, first there was 11 and then all of a sudden, well, it was 12. But as far as Judas, when he did what he did, but 11 means understanding that associated that we be considered imperfect, a disorganization of system and the disorder of chaos of things. So basically it is a higher form. That's what it represents, represents in the Bible. And God was saying, he said, Deanna, they don't understand the great commission. Let me tell you something. Everything is numbers, but in the spirit of God, it is so much deeper. It's not like about just about money and financial, everything. If you notice, even in the tabernacle, he said, I need this seven foot. I need this three inches. Even the ark, he said, I need this six inches. I need this. Even when um, Moses built the ark, he says, I, I, I need this seven feet. I need this six feet. What am I saying? God is speaking in numbers these days. God is speaking in dreams. God is speaking in your life. You have to switch it up. You have to switch it up. I don't know who this is for, but you got to switch it up. He didn't make me re redirect the whole message because somebody is pulling on me. You got to switch it up. You keep trying to figure out, God, why isn't anything falling? Why isn't it falling? God says, follow the signs. You got to follow the signs. God is always speaking, you guys. And a lot of people say, well, I don't hear him like you. I don't hear him audibly. You don't have to hear him audibly. You just listen to your spirit. And when he say go, go. When he say do, do. When he say separate, separate. When he say cut, cut it. When he say go, go. You got to be, you got, thank you, Lord. You got to be radical. In order to truly be a child of God, you have to be radical. And the reason why God took me to this numbers thing, because whoever you are pulling on me, you've been seeing numbers, you've been seeing dates, you're supposed to write books, God has told you to move, God has told you to do this and that, and you're like, well, God, how am I going to do it? Sister or brother, whoever you are, because God has not given me a clarity on that, and I don't need 